I can see only two answers. Two person has answered it. Please try to answer it, everyone. Okay, now we will move to the solution part. Uh, so here, it is given, and uh, when x comma y is tending to one comma minus one, we need to find the limiting value. So. So now just put this point in this equation, okay? In the f of x comma y. Are you now try to observe that? Are you getting the the limit as some determinate form or not? If you are getting, then we can say that the limit, the limiting value, we can we can find the limiting value by just putting this point in the equation. So if you put one comma minus one here, you'll get uh, one q minus minus one q upon one minus minus. So it will be one minus minus one upon one plus one, that is two by two, which is one. Okay, so we got one as the answer. So option B would be correct. Is it clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now try to solve this question. Can you please zoom in a little bit? Yeah, fine. thank you.
so for this problem we need to equate the uh, tangent lines right by making all them zero uh yeah, yeah. yeah what are you asking yeah for this question we need to equate the tangent lines to zero and equate all of them right yeah yeah ha huh. thank you so i have a one doubt uh, that uh, is a tangent hyperplane equal to no, not equal to like uh, somehow similar to linear approximation right Uh, hello am i audible yes sir you are uh, yes sir I you think... are audible yeah i asked one thing ha uh... uh ha -huh. can you please repeat that yeah question hyper uh, tangent plane is somehow similar to linear approximation function right so okay is there any relation? so tangent ha uh, it it is it is similar to that linear approximation Are all completed answer in this? Okay. okay. Uh, sir, I have a doubt. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Ah, uh, please ask. Uh, so a fine uh, vector space a fine me कैसे convert करते हैं? वेक्टर स्पेस को अफाइन में कैसे कन्वर्ट करते हैं मेरे पास कोई इक्वेशन है वो वेक्टर में है हाँ वेक्टर स्पेस एक अलग सा चीज है और अफाइन स्पेस एक अलग सा चीज है ठीक है ओके तो हाँ यू कैन यू कैन जेनरेट अफाइन स्पेस बाय यूजिंग द वेक्टर स्पेस ओके सर एक्चुअली जो टेंजन की इक्वेशन है वो but after that what i have to do i don't know ki ye jo direction of the vector space hai iska kya karna vector hai iska kya karna hai kaise use karna hai abhi okay i'll uh, i'll explain this uh, solution okay just wait sir one more thing when the lecture actually sir was telling this uh, parametric form uh, is generally uh, Important. The symmetry form is not so important. Okay. Huh. So I did not go through. I went through the lecture symmetry form, but now only I'm seeing there is a question in the question paper. So please explain me afterwards, sir. When you are explaining the uh, solution from parametric form, okay. how you have to convert to symmetry form? Okay. Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sir, can you please start?
discussing this question. All done, I think. When you will answer it. Yeah. Well, we know. Sir, can we continue? Yes, sir. Uh, hello. I think she lost connection. This one is the first question, right? Yeah, for two days, it's the first question. Second question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leave us something. OK. Sarji. Which paper is this? Uh, 20th April, 2022, I guess. Yeah, 2022, 2021 completed. Can, you, can anyone send the link of that paper, please? Mm. No, I don't think it's coming. No, it's January term 20th. Please do send the link of that paper. PDF of that. If anyone has. Sir, please start uh, solving this. Uh...
हेलो यस सो मीर सर सो मच टाइम कैन वी स्टार्ट सॉल्विंग दिस क्वेश्चन लाइक एवरीवन आई नो आई डोंट थिंक सो ही इज अवे फ्रॉम फॉर मोर देन हेलो विश्व मीर सर इज नॉट अवेलेबल राइट आई थिंक विश्व जी नॉट इज नॉट देयर या ओके 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 आई एम आई एम नॉट रिस्पोंडिंग फ्रॉम लॉन्ग टाइम आई गेट या we have other tiers also in this group so they can also take a lead so so can someone tell how so, this uh, from parametric to symmetric form how we have to do uh, narendran ji aapko t value se equate karna hai aur t value uh, sabke liye ek hote hai na to so, equate karne se aate hai no x of t equal to 1 plus uh, uh, t by root 2 uh, आपको x इक्वल टू वन प्लस टी इंटू वन बाई रूट आया है ना एक्चुअली So how that is converted to this form x minus one by one by root two? Yeah, that uh, t of x means uh, function of x, right? Yeah. Okay, so you okay. can put x equal to one. F of x something like f of x, x of f t. It's f of t. Okay, instead of t. Uh, in any way, it is the function taking uh, random variable x, right? So x equal to one plus t by root two. So one you can hello? get t by x minus one by one by root two. Right? Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, am I? Am I audible to? Yeah, thank, yeah. thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Very much. She has okay. come. Thank you. Okay. So my screen is visible, right? Yeah, it's already visible. Okay. Okay. I'm really sorry that uh, for the disturbance. Uh, actually, I faced some uh, problem. Okay. So now uh, we will uh, try to solve this question, right? Okay. so uh, consider the function this which of the following f n subspaces represent the tangent line at the point 1 comma 1 in the direction of the vector 1 comma 1 okay so to find the tangent line we need to find f of 1 comma 1 right it will be 1 q plus 1 q so right so the point is 1 comma 1 comma 2 at at this point and uh, okay direction is given it is 1 comma 1 what will be the unit vector for this uh, root 2 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 yeah yeah 1 by root And if x if y dot u the directional derivative, right? It will be so. It will be the f x. F x is three x square, right? Three x square comma three y square. Yeah. What are you asking? Comma three y square. Yeah. Three x square comma three y square. right so ha huh. so we need to find at 1 comma 1 this this thing so at 1 comma 1 right and dot with uh, this 1 by root 2 comma 1 by root 2 so it will be at 1 comma 1 you'll get 3 comma 3 And dot with one by root two, one by root two. 
So we'll get uh, three by root two plus three by root two. That is six by root two, right? Means now, three yeah, three root two can solve. So, huh? What will be the tangent line? What will be the symmetric so form of the? How come six by root two? I just uh, okay. So here we have found the directional derivative. Okay, in the direction of one comma one. Yes. Sir. By uh, by using that uh, gradient vector. Okay. Yes. So what you do to find the directional derivative? You just need to find the gradient vector and dot product with the direction in which you want to find. Okay. You need to take yes. the unit vector of that direction in which you need to find the uh, directional derivative. That thing I have just uh, used here. Okay, I have found what is the gradient vector at one comma one. So that is three comma three, and uh, in which direction I want to find the uh, directional derivative? That is one by root two comma one by root two. I just Made the dot product here. Okay. Yes, I got it. Yeah. And how did you got the direction vector? One by two. Two. It is uh, given here in the direction of the vector one comma one. So it is not a unit vector, right? One comma one. We need to find the unit vector along this direction one comma one. So the unit vector will be what? That vector divided by its norm. Right? Are you getting? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's okay. clear. Okay. So now we'll move to the. Huh. So what will be the tangent line? So it will be x comma. Here it is the point. Okay. One comma one comma two. I just found f of what is f of one comma one. Okay, we need to find the tangent line at one comma one at this point. Okay, one comma one. So, at okay, just wait. Huh. So at that point, what will be our z coordinate? That is one comma one comma two, right? Because f of one comma one is two. Now, the symmetric form of the uh, tangent line will be uh, x comma one by Root two, comma, is equal to y at one, right? Y minus one by root two equal to z minus two by oh sorry, it's one by root two. Six by root two, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be six by root two. Z minus two by six by root two. So six minus one. Yeah. Your writing is. Your writing is. Your writing is. X coordinate x minus at that uh, whatever one comma one comma two ha. minus x comma x minus yeah. one divided by root two the three unit vector. I mean whatever. Ha. Uh, direct, directional yeah, vector root two, you have to divide. Yeah, yeah. So you get a uh -huh. symmetric form directly. That's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. So all of you got it? No, sir. Sir, how did you get x minus one? X, huh? At which point you you want to find the tangent line? You tell me. At one one. Ah, uh, at one comma one. No, no. That is the okay. So at one comma one, what will be your uh, functional value? Two. Two, right? Because f of one comma one is two. So the point would be one comma one comma two, right? One comma one comma two. At this point, you want to find the tangent line, right? Yes, sir. So I just. Applied that here, that uh, x minus one by one by root two. This is your, this is our directional uh, 
in in the direction at which we need to find the directional derivative that is 1 by root 2 from here equal to y minus 1 upon 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 the y coordinate is 1 by root 2 similarly z minus 2 upon what is the directional derivative at uh, 1 comma 1 in the direction of 1 comma 1 that we just have found here that is 6 by root 2 right 6 by root 2 that's it so are you getting y is minus okay minus by one. minus yeah, why it is okay. minus so, minus one. Here, this part you are asking about. Yeah. You are asking about this part, minus one. Sir, from okay, tangent so, lines sir. of uh, individual x and y and z, we can eat. Yes. Find this. Ha! Huh, you can easily find it. Uh, so, huh, so she has asked about why this minus one. So it is just the formula, right? No. So this is symmetric form, right? So if we uh, want to make it par uh, uh, parametric form, uh, then what to do? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you, you want to... Um, make the parametric form right yeah this is symmetric uh, one listen uh, to get the parametric form you just need to write the points first like one one two plus t times in the direction like uh, t times uh, one root two comma one root two comma six by root two right yeah can you please repeat uh to get uh, the parametric form uh, yeah plus t times Yes, yes. Uh, 1 by root 2, comma 1 by root 2, comma 6 by root 2. So it will be, you can write this also this way, like uh, 1 uh, inside bracket, 1 plus t uh -huh. times uh, t by root 2, comma uh -huh. 1 plus t by root 2. Yeah, you got it? Yeah, so, so x equal to, so it will be like x equal to? Yeah, x, x, x equal, equal to, to 1 plus, plus root t by root 2. Oh. Oh. Why? Y equal to 1 t. plus t by root 2. Yeah. Z of t will be 2 plus 6 by root 2. 60 by yeah, yeah. root 2. Yeah. Okay, okay. 60, sir. 60. Uh, 60, yeah. Yeah. So first okay. will be x, yes, second will be y, and third will be z. Yeah. So is this clear to all of you? Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's clear. Okay. So here is the question. Okay, so first uh, try to solve, uh, try to uh, solve this first option, whether it is true or false, then we will uh, move to the next uh, page. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir? Yeah? Sir, which question Lisa? are you doing on? Uh, 166, question number. Okay, so please okay. show it in the hood. I think there are uh, four, four options. Uh, so firstly, try to solve for this A and B, then we'll move to the next page, okay? You need to uh, find that uh, these options are true or false, okay? The point is also a point of fit, right? In vector. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, all the points, uh, suppose you are considering for R3, then all the points are affine subspaces for R3. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
even single point also yeah yeah ah single points obviously that uh, point you are taking that is going to be the single point only if you are combining two points then the spanning of those two points will make a line right So A is true and B is not fully visible. So what is the meaning of well-defined product? Such a product is well-defined. Yeah. Okay, product is well-defined. Ah, oh, that means uh, you are able to find the product. Okay. That means there exists some uh, invertible matrix P for which P A is well-defined. Means That's it it exists. It exists. A kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, invertible. Okay. Huh. So uh, there is some okay. Some part of uh, option B is written here also. Can you have you completed uh, this one? Yeah, it's completed. Yeah. Okay. All of you? Yes, sir. Have, have you completed? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you please scroll up a little bit for the B? Yeah. Sir, B was also not vis visible to me. B was not visible to you. Option B, right? C, D is yes, visible. Sir, please but... show the B also. Okay, okay. I'm just going back. Here it is. Is this clear now? Yes. 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 A, yes A sir. Two, but don't know about B. Okay. Oh. Okay. We have infinite dimensions. Then let out A is zero. Huh? If yeah. x equal to b has infinity many solutions, then that of a is zero. But how do you know that uh, you are able to find the determinant of a if a is not a square matrix? Are you getting? Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, shall we move to the next uh, page? Yes. Yeah, Yes, yes. Okay. So here it is. Sir, invertible means uh, it is also square, right? Ha! Huh. Invertible means it is square. Then A should be square matrix, right? If uh, there is exist. Then... No, but how? Uh, multiplication of two matrices exist whenever the. Uh, column of the first matrix is equal to the rows of the second matrix right yeah yeah you just need to think about it here yeah C is false. C is oh, yeah, false. So what it means by reduced row equivalent form 
or same same ha huh. can you tell me um uh, if uh, okay just wait uh, if uh, two matrices have the same rank okay and and of same order then uh, can you tell me the reduced row echelon form of those two matrices are unique or not may not be unique can be same uh, but no no actually it will be unique okay okay but the row echelon form may not be unique the row echelon form only but the reduced okay. row echelon form will be unique so now think about uh, any square matrix okay any square matrix whose uh, okay think about two square matrices suppose consider for three cross three matrices whose determinants are non zero okay? okay for both of the matrices the determinant is non zero so after reducing it to row echelon form sorry after reducing it to reduced row echelon form which matrix you will get i have said after reducing it to reduced row echelon form okay unique what kind of matrix what uh, same uh, matrix ha huh, same matrix but what kind of matrix you will get you will get identity matrix right yes yes if yes. see if the if the determinant is non zero then the rank is 3 in that case yes 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 okay just uh, let me write here uh so we are uh, just wait uh, if you started the explanation here then rank oh, will no, be no, so correct yeah so see ra rank will be equal rank will be 3 right equal and it yes. is 3 suppose this is yes. a this is b some matrix 3 cross 3 i, I have said determinant of a is equal to determinant of b so both are non zero is equal to non zero that means both are invertible matrix so rank yes. will be 3 for both the cases right yes yes rank of a equal to rank of b equal to 3 right yes so what will be the reduced row echelon form of an invertible matrix of order 3 that will be that the identity matrix of order 3 echelon form yeah that will be identity matrix because you need to have uh, you need to have three columns which contains the three uh, pivot pivot elements right Yes. So, 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 what will be the row echelon form of those? This is the row echelon form. We don't know about these entries. Okay. Suppose this is A, this is B, this is C. It is a reduced row echelon form. Okay. Sorry, row echelon form. R E S. Yes. So, what will be the R R E S of this? A B C will be zero. Yeah, that's all. What kind of matrix you got here? Identity. Identity. Yeah. So that is the thing. So what about nullity so, in this case? In this case, nullity you tell me. Order is not given. Nullity is zero. Nullity is zero. When the order is not given. When the order is not given. Ah, and the okay. reduced row echelon form. Okay. 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 And and it is given that uh, those matrices are invertible, right? Uh, listen, yeah. unique. Uh, yeah, unique reduced row echelon form. Uh, All the uh, guarantees that their rank will be same. Yeah, Nality rank also. will be the same as order of that matrix. If it yeah. is given that both are invertible, okay. Invertible means the end P are not invertible. In that case, also reduced uh, row. If reduced row echelon form are same, then the uh -huh. their rank will be same. Yeah. And you know that uh, reduced row echelon form are unique for matrix, so the matrices will also be same. Yeah. Have you got it? Just how can we? So the statement is true or false? So obviously the statement will be false. Sir, so in the same way, nullity will be also equal, right? Ha. Huh. Nullity will be equal if we are considering for uh, two same order of matrices. Okay. 
okay anyway we'll uh, solve that uh, this this one so see here uh, here what is given ha huh, what about option number 1 uh, can anyone tell me so it is true it is true okay so what about others because how n is equal how to how is it true okay i'll i'll explain that i'm just asking to everyone uh, is it uh, true or false true true sir okay so can you can you just uh, find uh, some example find some affine subspaces of r3 l and l dash for which this option will not be true can you think about that Can you think any? For L and L dash means uh, a faint transformation of uh, another, right? One another. Huh. Yeah. Then so N L dash mean? equal to L plus uh, some vector. Yeah, L plus some vector, right? Then. And the intersection is uh, that vector, that vector we added. Okay. So now just think about this one. Uh. okay so it is uh, given that uh, subspaces of r3 so just i am just uh, uh, explaining it with uh, taking the example of r2 okay because it is very hard to uh, uh, take the like r3 plane it's very hard to explain that so okay so now this is l consider this is l and this is our l dash okay both are parallel what about this Tell me. This is our A, and this is our L dash. Okay, it is given, and both are parallel lines. Now, this one will be the vector subspace, right? For L and L dash. So this is L. Yes. This is L dash. Corresponding vector okay. subspace. Yeah, this is the subspace. Let's say. So now tell me, what will be the what will be the number of elements of L intersection L dash? Zero. Zero. That is zero, right? Zero yes. vector. Yeah. So. But even that for, is for, simply a subspace. No, no, no. Okay. The intersection of these, if you are considering for this case, the intersection of these will be like both of these are disjoint, right? That is the null set. The intersection of uh, both these uh, sets will be null set. That is not zero. Zero is uh, different. Zero is this. This is containing an element, but in this case, it is not containing element. Okay. Are you getting? Yes. They are yes, not sorry. intersecting anywhere, which is why is it right? Yeah, yeah. So, for this example, this option is not true, right? Okay, sir. Ah, and and you can consider for another case also. Let's say, uh, okay, it is given that from R three. Uh, okay. So from R three, suppose consider this one. Uh, okay. suppose consider an affine subspace which is x comma y comma z so set x plus y plus z equal to 1 okay this is l suppose this is l and l dash is suppose uh, it is the point only that is uh, uh, 3 comma 2 comma 1 this point only okay this is l dash what about this what will be the uh, intersection of uh, l and l dash so what is basically l l is basically the plane in r3 right yes ha uh, and l dash is what 
एल डेट इज इट्स आल्सो प्लेन आई फाइंड सरफेस इन अर्थ हां बिकॉज़ ऑल द प्लेन या एंड एल डेस इज जस्ट अ पॉइंट एंड 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 एवरी पॉइंट्स ऑन आर थ्री इज अफाइन सब स्पेसेस राइट यस व्हाट अबाउट दिस इट विल बी द इंटरसेक्शन ऑफ एल एंड एल डेस नल सेट या इट इज आल्सो नल सेट राइट दिस केस आल्सो यू आर गेटिंग दैट सो इन द टू डायमेंशन इन द टू डायमेंशन व्हाई हैव वी टेकन एल टू बी पैरेलल टू एल डैश Okay. L dash can be so, any other line also, no? Ha, L dash can be this also. Suppose this is L, L dash can be this, right? This hmm. is L, this is L dash. In that But case, when it in intersection uh, L dash will not be null set. Ha, no, no, no. In this case, it will be an affine subspace because you are getting this point as intersection of L and L dash, right? Hmm. Hmm. In this case, and, and that point is also affine uh, 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 subspace. Affine subspace. Ha ha ha. Every point is affine subspace. But uh, the yeah. null set in that parallel line, that also is a uh, uh, affine subspace. No no. See here. L, when L and L dash are parallel to each other. Okay. So when L and L dash are parallel to each other, then so are you like are you able to get the solution for any parallel lines you are not right no l uh, intersection l dash will be null will be null set no, null, null set, set is this yes. right hmm. null set means in that case you won't get any uh, like you won't get any, any point to any affine space ha affine subspace yeah affine subspace if it is given in the question that if l and l dash are two affine subspaces of r3 and uh, uh, l and l dash both are intersecting right mm. or like uh, it is given no, that then uh, this l intersection l dash is an s affine space whether the statement is true or false that is what is asked yeah if if they are intersecting then then uh, there will be a point on in the fine subspace yeah yeah then then that the point will be a subspace a fine subspace yes. of r3 yeah then this statement would be correct hmm. okay hmm. so all of you got it is the answer sir a is true or false a is false false just because of that yeah. one particular case where l intersection both lines are parallel that is a null set so that is why it is false yeah this and this case also you can consider this one okay i have taken l as this l dash as this okay okay so we will move to the next option Sir, zero vector is also present, right? For any intersection. Uh, no, zero vector. How? Zero vector. Uh, if they are not intersecting, uh, then zero vector is present, right? Between them, intersection. No, no, no. Zero vector won't be present. Like, it, it will not be in the intersection side. How? How zero vector will be? Even zero vector is not present in the affine uh, subspaces like A L and L dash. If A L is something like this, which is not passing through the origin, zero vector is present here. Is it passing through origin? Okay, got it? Yeah. Yeah. If it is given that they are only subspaces, then you can say zero vector is present. Okay. so the intersection of two subspaces i'm i'm saying about vector subspaces intersection of two vector subspaces you will always get the uh, like uh, you will go always get a subspace okay what about this suppose this is a subspace and this is a subspace okay so this is 
this is the point uh, this is the line y equal to x this is the line y equal to minus x both are subspaces right in r2 yes but what will be the intersection of both of this zero, that is zero. this point only 0 comma 0 right so what about 0 comma 0 0 comma 0 is also a subspace right of r2 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's the thing okay so now huh. uh, option b think, uh, yeah i'm running out of space okay so option b what is being given in option b it's given that let a x equal to b be a system of linear equations with infinitely many solutions and let c be an invertible matrix such that product t a is well defined okay okay then the system of equations uh, p a x equal to b has in has infinitely many solutions okay we'll just solve it here so see uh, okay if uh, a x equal to b is saying that it has infinitely many solutions right uh, okay infinitely many solution this given okay if it has infinitely many solution then there exists some column vector c for which it has no solution yeah Right. Independent. It will have independent yeah. yeah. There will be some value C for which A X equal to C has no solution. Okay. Yeah. So now huh. that means uh, now get uh, okay. Now just get a matrix, let's say uh, Q such that uh, c equal to q b okay such that c equal to q b so if you are able to get c equal to q b that means uh, okay huh. you can put uh, p equal to q inverse okay so what is q and what is b uh, you can uh, get a Q, listen, uh, B and C is same column, uh, same length column vector, right? So you can get, uh, how you can get Q just uh, a diagonal, uh, multiplying a diagonal matrix, uh, like uh, with corresponding the elements of B and C. I think uh, Bisho will explain that one later, uh, how you uh -huh, can get yeah. Q. Okay. And so that see, matrix yeah. will be always invertible. Yeah, that matrix will always be invertible. Since it is so, diagonal matrix, yeah. Yeah, AX equal to C has no solution, it is given. Now, what about this? AX equal to QB. It will, it will have no solution, that means. Now, just multiply Q inverse both the side equal to q inverse q b that means equal to b b so it will also have no solution then p a x equal to b will have no solution right so now let's uh, consider for some example Sir? let's say so, yeah. Uh, see, it is given that AX is equal to B has infinitely many solutions, right? Uh -huh. 
then uh, how are you uh, how are you putting ax is equal to c has got no solution oh actually listen if you have ax is equal to b in finally many solution uh, you can get uh, c so that ax is equal to c has no solution like if ax is equal to b has infinitely many solution what that mean the rank of a is equal to rank of ab augmented matrix right yeah and uh, if you take a is 3 cross 3 matrix like three equations three variable in that case your number of equation reduced number of independent equation reduced right yes and you can get see such a way, uh, like uh, a has a, a rank a rank of a less than a rank of the augmented matrix ac so you are saying you are taking that uh, uh, b the c. column matrix as a different uh, matrix yeah different so matrix that could have a, that could uh, have no solution yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, okay okay we can find this actually, uh, yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah we can find out the matrix such that hmm. ax is equal to c has got no solution yeah, yeah. you can and find the matrix be, the column vector this property c6 c7 pardon c8. Uh, it is a property we can prove that uh, okay, that okay. if a x is equal to b has infinitely many solution then there exists c so uh, that a x is equal to c has got no solution yeah yeah okay okay, okay. so now uh, think about some example that is a 3 a is of 3 cross 3 matrix obviously x will be 3 cross 1 what about b huh b will be 3 cross 1 right so a of a into x 3 cross 1 is equal to c 3 cross 1 right it has no solution let b is equal to let's say uh, a b c okay and c is equal to x y z right so now uh, so c is equal to q b that means what about q q will be x by a 0 0 and uh, it will be 0 y by b yeah what about this this will be 0 0 z by c yeah so it is invertible right yeah yeah that's the thing and observe that multiplying qb you will get uh, c yes yeah if you will just multiply qb then you will get c okay so q is uh, q is an invertible matrix okay all of you got it if you have any doubt yes, then please ask okay what about others yes, sir can you please once explain it from the beginning like this is a new concept also with the rational why did we took c as i mean no solution okay so actually see here uh, the the column vector c there exists some color column vector c okay for which this ax equal to c has no solution you can you can just think about it uh, suppose uh, huh, but about ax equal to b has infinitely many solution it says what that means the rank of a the rank of a will be less than will be always less than rank the minimum augmented rank of uh, no no the rank of a will be less than the minimum of columns or rows yes yes yeah, for a yes so if you are getting something like this so let's say one zero zero and then zero 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 this is our a and for b you are getting to zero it is a augmented b the uh, uh, row echelon form of a augmented b and uh, so one 
zero 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 zero. In this case, you can get two one. This is the augmented form of A and C. Right? That's that's why I said that there exists some column vector C. Okay, so whichever uh, like uh, uh, what is that elementary row operations you have applied here, okay, on the A, if you just back calculate it to obtain the what is matrix A, what is the original form of matrix A? If you just back calculate here, apply those things. in this matrix then you will come up with the original matrix a and the original matrix c right mm. what is c so in this case you tell me will this uh, will this uh, equation have uh, like uh, unique like infinitely many solution it won't have because in this row you are getting zero in the left side and you are getting one here it specifies yeah. that it has no solution right no solution yes correct yeah so what about this a is equal to c c exist here right yeah. just have think about c yeah. that is the thing so so you are considering c uh, as such in such a way that it uh, not, does not give any solution right like you are no, considering yeah. here now uh, 2 1 in column uh, this is c so that's why it is not giving um, any solution right hmm hmm yeah so no it so is not the matrix c it is the uh, i can say it is ha huh, so c so whichever elementary row transformation you are applying for a that thing you are also applying for this column also right yes 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 So initially A was something like this A B C D E F okay yes after reducing it to row echelon form you are getting one zero 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 okay yeah so suppose uh, in initially your C matrix is something like this P Q this is your C matrix then after uh, like uh, applying those operations on this augmented matrix you are come up with two two one here. Okay. okay so if you just back calculate supposing that uh, you have uh, applied that uh, r1 will uh, convert it to c into r1 it about if if you just back calculate it that will be r1 will be converted to r1 by c right mm -hmm. so if you just do all those things Back, then you will come up with what is your A and what is your C. So that is the thing actually. Okay. So we have found the, the matrix C. What about those? So this part, all of you got it? Yes. Like how we thought some uh, matrix Q such so that C is equal to Q B and all those things. If not, then please let us know. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, the option C. Let A and B be two matrices. So that uh, reduced echelon form of A. And B are the same. Then rank of A, obviously, if uh, the reduced uh, echelon form, the reduced row echelon form of A and B are same, then the rank of A, whichever value you are getting for the rank of A, that will be equal to rank of B, right? Yes. It has to be equal. Yes. Yes. So this has to. This be is wrong, no? E option is wrong, right? Yeah. False. This is wrong. and uh, these two are also wrong okay what about option number d so i hope c is clear to everyone right option c is very uh, like it is very simple to 
थिंक अबाउट इट ओके व्हाट अबाउट ऑप्शन डी दैट ए एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो बी ए सिस्टम ऑफ लीनियर इक्वेशंस सच दैट रिड्यूस्ड एसलन फॉर्म ऑफ द कोएफिशिएंट मैट्रिक्स ए इज द आइडेंटिटी मैट्रिक्स ओके सो इट्स फॉल्स फॉल्स या इट इज फॉल्स लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दिस ए एक्स इक्वल टू ओके इट इज ए होमोजेनियस सिस्टम ऑफ लीनियर इक्वेशन राइट ए एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो बी ए सिस्टम ओके सो सेट रिड्यूस रेसलॉन फॉर्म ऑफ द कोएफिशिएंट मैट्रिक्स ए हां इफ द रिड्यूस्ड रेसलॉन फॉर्म ऑफ ए is identity matrix then what can you say about the solution of ax equal to 0 homogeneous unique solution unique solution yes yeah it will have trivial solution right unique that means mm. unique obviously zero yes the solution zero. will be zero only right yes yes okay identity matrix then the system ax equal to 0 has infinitely many solution no not possible okay so i hope all of you got it right just one question about this que- i mean this four options we yeah. selected all the options as wrong so either this question is wrong or something is going wrong i don't know no actually uh, in this question option a is shown as the correct okay but you marked it wrong please correct you marked it wrong actually no 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 uh, like i thought some examples here For which option one is wrong. So, like, if uh... so, I am just assuming that uh, I'm just thinking that uh, uh, there there is some uh, some some extra given information has to be given in option one. No, that is not. Uh, yeah. So. intersection if intersection of two affine subspace is empty then is empty affine empty subset of it is also a affine subspace right yeah so empty basically uh, so empty option a is right for any cases okay so the option a is right is, option a is right you are saying right Mir, are you there? Yes. Okay. So B, C, D are wrong. A is correct. Okay, so option A is right. Then how about the explanation of null, uh, null, null set, sir? Like uh, the explanation that you have given for this L and L dash intersection is null, null set. What is that uh, then? contradicts the uh, point right yeah yeah that thing yeah that thing i want to uh, like uh, confirm from mir mir can you please uh, tell me that uh, uh, like yeah uh, empty way... set is also an affine yeah. subspace we can assume that uh, because uh, uh, the a set will not be a affine subspace if it uh, contradicts with any property of uh, affine subspace but for the empty set uh yeah does not yeah. Uh, actually the way we prove uh, empty set is subset of all set empty set is empty space subspace that concept will be applicable here that uh, empty set does not uh, contradicts with any properties of affine subspace that's why we can assume that empty set is also an affine subspace okay okay sir empty set is also an affine subspace right yes Okay. All of us are there. There is pin drop silence, sir. okay so now uh, try to solve this question
so one hai are you all trying it is this turn question number 167 Dimension is one, I think. Yeah, the answer will be one. Because uh, the projection of W on W itself, right? Uh, w on W. No, no, no. It's not like that. Oh, sorry, sir. V. We... It is. It is being asked about uh, the image space P W. The entire image space. It will be the dimension. Image space is the uh, is W, right, sir? Yeah, image space is W. So basically, dimension of W. Yeah, it is very easy dimension yeah. of W. What about this? The dimension of uh, W. This one is W. So It's... dimension of W is basically. That means you can write it in terms of this x comma x comma zero, right? Yes. So what will be the dimension? One. We have only one unknown variable. The dimension yes. of W will be one. Yes. Right. So the dimension is one. So one thing here, one line I could not understand. Please go to the. Question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the third line, let P W such that V okay. to W be a projection on W. Huh. So. So P W is basically a transformation. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, Miss uh, projection. Uh, yeah. So you are taking. That means P W of. How will be any arbitrary vector from B? Look like B is basically mentioned here. It's R three. Yeah. So it will be x y z, right? X y z. P W of x y z equal to what? We need to solve it. Okay. We need to solve it. What will be the projection of uh, any vector x comma y comma z to W? We are going to solve this. Okay. Okay. So you will get something here also here, right? Okay. P W is basically a linear transformation, which for for which the domain space is B, that means R three, and the co-domain space is W. W is basically this. Okay. Now we are going to find what is our uh, uh, P W basically. Okay. So see, ha. Huh. Now try to solve this question. Question number one sixty eight. So R three to R one, right? R one. No, no, no. R three to R three. But okay, dimension is uh, okay. Three one. Ah, uh, W W is uh, a subspace of R three, right? W is basically a subspace of R three. It is not entire R three, but it is a subspace. Okay, so to solve this question, you just need to find what is the projection of, uh, but what is this linear transformation projection of uh, B on W? Okay, try to solve this question. So it will be one cross three matrix, right? Yeah, one cross three matrix. We'll get the matrix for P W as one cross. So rank will be one. Huh? If it is the non-zero, then rank will be one. If rank is one, then you can say what will be the nullity. The number of uh, columns minus uh, rank. Yeah. That is three minus one. Okay. Anyway, solve this question.
Shall we move to the solution part here? Yes. Okay. So, uh, huh. so the projection of let's take a vector p from b. That means b from R3, right? That is uh, b is equal to x y z. Okay. So now. Uh -huh. So to project some something, you need to find the basis. Like on whichever plane you are projecting, you need to find a basis for that. So we are projecting on W. So W is basically x comma x comma zero, right? Yeah. What will be a basis for W? One one zero. Yeah, one one zero is a basis for W. So now. Okay, and we have assumed a, a b as this x comma y comma z. So, what will be the projection of b on w? It will be uh, b means x y z dot with one comma one comma zero upon one comma one comma zero. Ah, and it is also following the uh, usual. Uh, Dot product as uh, uh, with inner product as see here question consider B is equal to R three with inner product as the dot product okay so what is the uh, method to find the projection one one zero into one one zero yeah not into it is dot um, product dot product is yes. yeah it is one one zero multiplied with one one zero right yes. So, and, and it is following. It is saying that in the question, uh, the inner product is uh, the usual dot product. That means, what will be the dot product of these two? X Y Z, one one zero. X plus X. Y. X plus Y, right? Yes. The dot product of these two, that is X plus Y, upon uh, uh, two. So that will be two. one plus one. That is two into one one zero. So it is becoming x plus y by two, comma x plus y by two, comma zero, right? Yes. Ah, huh. so we have find we have found this p w of x comma y comma z is equal to x plus y by two, comma x plus y by two, comma zero, right? Yes. Sir, is this the projection formula? Yeah, this is the projection formula. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So can you tell me what will be the uh, what will be the rank and nullity of the matrix for this P W? So to find to find the null space, just need to equate this thing to zero. If You will equate this to zero. It means you will get uh, x plus y by two equal to zero. X is equal to. Uh, x is equal to y. Yeah, x equal to minus y. So what will be the nullity? And z is zero already given. Yeah. So x. Minus x zero. Oh no. You see here. Uh, huh. So actually, you can just 
find the nullity by uh, your uh, that uh, usual uh, method that this is linear transformation you can just find the matrix for this linear transformation and then huh, tell me what will be the matrix for this linear transformation if you are considering the uh, basis the standard order basis for domain and uh, for co domain you are uh, for co domain we already have the basis that is 1 comma 1 comma 0 right what will be the linear uh, what will be the matrix for this so p of 1 0 0 Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, why did we equated x plus y upon two to zero? Where? Uh, I just have erased that. No, okay. sir. That's okay. I got that. But why did we uh, equated? Because it is giving null space. Ha! Huh. Null space of uh, that P W. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So, ah, uh, huh. it will get uh, one by two, one by two, zero. P of zero one zero will get uh, same thing. One by two, one by two. Zero and P of zero zero one will get uh, so zero 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 right. That means and the basis for this is one one zero for this. So we'll come up with. One one zero means one by two into one one zero, right? Similarly, for this also, one by two into one one zero. So one by two, one by two. Here you will get zero. It is zero into one one zero. Here it is the matrix. So from this matrix, what will be the nullity of this matrix? So this is the matrix representation of P W, okay? According to corresponding to the standard order basis for uh, uh, this domain, and the one one zero for one one zero basis for co domain. So we have got this as the matrix of P W. What will be the nullity of this matrix? Tell me. Nullity will be two. Nullity will be two, right? Because the rank is one, the nullity will be two. So the nullity is two here. Okay, all of you got it. Sir, uh, but uh, why are we not, uh, uh, you know, using the definition of null space here? Like kernel, we find the kernel and find the dimension to find the nullity. Okay. Why should we go and uh, why should we uh, find the matrix? Can't okay. we uh, can't we just uh, find the kernel and uh, uh, because we already found the null space right x uh, uh, x plus y by two you said uh, with that uh, projection projection of yeah, yeah. Uh, w is x plus y by two comma x plus y by two comma zero so with that we equated that to zero and found the null space right yeah yeah huh. So from there, so null, so null space will be I think x y z as uh, such that x equal to minus y that will be the null space. So which means uh, according to that the dimension is one, right? Null space dimension. No, no, no dimension no, no. is the two. The thing is, the thing no. is if you will okay, only x and space. y. So what, sir? No, no, please tell, ask me. Yeah, yeah, getting nullity, you can uh, get the dimension of image space by rank nullity theory. That is, if nullity is one, then your dimension of image space will be three minus one is. 
No, no. My question is, uh, now we got the projection as x plus y by 2, comma x plus y by 2, comma 0. So to find the nullity, uh, you said we'll, uh, because we'll have to find the kernel and we can, uh, we can find the nullity that way also, right? Instead of finding through the matrix form, mm -hmm. matrix method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after uh, finding nullity, you can get the null space. Uh, that means equating zero and you get the null space. But yeah. I think uh, uh, yeah, since it is a linear transformation is told uh, the projection, so I think uh, applying the formula of projection is safe always. No, sir, I'm asking, okay, we have applied the formula for projection and we have found the projection. But uh, now to find the null space of the projection, why do you have to, why do you have to, we can just, uh, uh, he, he first did equated it to zero and uh, x plus uh, y uh, is equal to zero. So x is equal to minus y we got. So, so that way can't we find the nullity is what my question is. Usually, I think if we form the matrix, uh, yeah, that way you can find the nullity, and uh, so the nullity will be uh, uh, one minus one zero. But uh, here, since uh, z component is already going to zero, so there is also one vector like zero zero one that will be the nullity. Yeah, because here you don't know about this one x plus y by two, x plus y by two comma zero equal to zero 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 right yes. what about this one this you cannot equate because zero into z you can put any value for z equal to zero right so you it is only given to... zero here yeah so now you what you did sir uh, uh, you just found the matrix uh, uh, like you know with the yeah. basis is it that is the image basis uh, is one uh, the w one one zero and uh, uh, the domain is the standard ordered basis yeah do, for domain i have taken the standard ordered basis oh. yeah okay. so okay, here i found p of one zero zero p of zero one zero p of zero zero one okay okay so that is the thing yeah okay uh, any doubt from this question? Shall we move to the next question? Yes. Let's solve this question. Just quickly solve this question. Try to observe this thing here, given that is uh, this one. This one is even here. Try to observe this. So please show once what was V. So you are asking about this one, right? Yes, sir. I'm asking about okay. This. Okay.
Radha, can you please mute yourself? So is the answer three? Okay, I'm moving to the solution part. So here it is given that B is an element from W, right? And it is being asked about what is what is the uh, length of projection of B on W, right? And uh, the length of B is given, that is three. Okay. Now tell me what will be the projection of a vector on that vector itself? Vector itself. Yeah, One. that is the same vector. Right. Uh, yes. yes. But, yeah. What about the length of that uh, projection? It will be the same as the length of the. the same vector. as the norm. Yeah. yeah. Same as the length of vector. Because the denominator and the denominator will be cancelled out, and we will get the single that vector only. Yeah. So, uh, so that is the thing here. Uh, so here it is given that B is a vector from W, okay? So you are projecting the vector B on W, like on W that, what it says? It says that you are projecting the vector B on the same vector B itself, okay? So the length will be three, as it is. There is a property on that, uh, which is being taught in lecture, the, um, the projection of the uh, vector, which is belongs from the W. So if you are doing the projection of that vector, that uh, you'll get the same uh, vector as the projection of that vector. So I hope this is clear to everyone. This is a very- So what is the word. use of the information V belongs to W here? Yeah. That is the main thing here, that it is saying that B is a vector from the subspace W. What is the subspace W? So W is basically the subspace on which you are projecting the vector. Okay. And sir, if V did not belong to W, then what will happen? Okay, then you will get something different. You will... You you'll get something different as the projection. Okay, I'm just explaining here. Suppose this is R2, okay? And this is a subspace, okay? This is W and this entire uh, plane is R2, okay? So, huh. So W is basically, let's say uh, it is, uh, x equal to y line that means x comma x so w is a subspace yes. in which the first and second coordinate are same okay and r2 is the entire r2 is also a subspace right it is the entire r2 that means okay. entire plane okay so in this question according to this question so I have just taken an example from R2 because, because it is very easy to explain, okay? I have not taken from R3. So see here, if you are taking a vector from W, okay? Suppose you are taking the vector 1, 1, which is from W, as well as it is from R2, right? 1, 1. It is also from R2, right? Yes. So if you are taking one comma one and you are projecting this one comma one on this one comma one itself, what you will get? 
will get same one comma one, right? Mm. Right. So that is the yes. thing. It is being given here. If B is element from W, that means B is element from R two, and B is also element from W. So W is the subspace on which we are projecting our vector. Okay, so is it clear to you? Are you getting it? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes. That is why only one mark is given. Only this is a theory part actually. Okay, so you have theory, right? No, no. I basically, projection of a vector on the yeah. subspace itself. Will be equal to the uh, same vector. Huh? No, no, no. If you are suppose you are projecting on a subspace, okay. So if you are taking the vector from that subspace, okay, and you are projecting that vector on that subspace itself, then you will get the same vector as the projection, right? Yes, yes. That's so what you are saying. projecting the same vector on the same. Vector itself, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, what about the length of that vector? The length will be also same, right? Mm. As the vector is same, then the length will also be same. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. I hope it is clear to all of you. Yes. Uh, yeah. We'll move to the next question. Solve this question. With the matrix presentation, with respect to some orthogonal process. Can you please mute yourself if you are not talking? So, sir, here what I can understand, we need to calculate two projection, right? One is for beta and one is for gamma with respect to W. Uh, I didn't get. Uh, you need to find the projection of beta and gamma with respect to W. No, no, you need to find you the need to find the matrix, project. right? Yeah, you need to find sir, the matrix. Sir, we have already found the matrix, no, sir. Um, you just yeah, yeah. Work okay, it I'm. It. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll uh, we'll explain this. Please uh, uh, take some time and uh, solve this from yourself. Then we'll uh, explain the solution part. Okay.
okay so see here uh, it is given that a be the matrix representation of uh, pw with uh, respect to some orthonormal basis beta and uh, okay okay then in the dimension of null space of s okay so normally uh, if okay for the for the projection matrix you just need to remember this property uh projection matrix as idempotent okay what this means this means if a is the matrix for uh, projection then what is the meaning of idempotent matrix that is a is equal to a square okay that means a is equal to a to the power n okay if a is equal to a square then what about a cube a cube equal to a square into a right a square is a that means you can say it is in the place of a square you can put a and a which is a square again a square is a right from here so a is equal to a to the power n so if it is idempotent then uh, you can say ha huh. so a square here it is given the null space of a square that means uh, the null space a square is basically a it is same as a so the null space of a dimension of null space that means nullity of a is equal to nullity of a square okay that is the thing just need to remember this property here it is also uh, taught in the lecture okay so is it clear to everyone yes sir yes sir, sir can you explain the question actually i could not understand the question okay so there here That's... with respect to beta and gamma actually what it means where beta comes from one uh, v and gamma comes from w yeah beta comes uh, comes from v and gamma comes from w but they are uh, orthonormal basis right orthonormal yes. means uh, the vector you will get you have to orthonormal. inner space zero inner inner space is zero and length one yes inner product is zero the mutually inner product has to be zero and the norm has to be one that is also normal yeah so that is the thing no sir that i understand but here it is saying that let a be the matrix representation of pw with respect to some orthonormal basis so with respect to orthonormal basis means i that line i okay. So, so the basis whichever you are taking uh, for for b and w that has to be orthonormal can you can you imagine a basis for b which is orthonormal so b is basically what it is r3 right r3 yeah so can you can you give an example of uh, orthonormal basis for r3 that is simple that is the standard order basis yeah, right yes 100 ha uh, uh. And what about uh, W? W is I think one minus one. Basis. No, no, no. What was the basis for W initially? The the W space is basically x comma x comma zero, one, right? One zero. Okay. One okay. one zero. So it is it is the basis for W. What about the orthonormal? Just need to. Uh huh. In this case, it is very easy to find the orthonormal. So you just need to divide it with it. Uh, norm because every single vector is orthogonal itself mm -hmm. so yes. 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 0 okay what will be the answer sir what answer to the question 
Uh, no, no, but I, I didn't get you. But you answer asking. to this question. One. She wants to know the answer to this question. Uh, oh, oh, answer is the answer is two. Answer is two. Answer is two. We, we, Null space yeah, of we a. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have found it here. The null. Uh, the null space. Yes. Okay. Okay, now try to solve this question. What is normalizing? The normalizing means uh, row reducing form. Normalizing mm -hmm. means by dividing by its norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Row wise, you have to divide by its So all of you noted the question here. So here it is the question. Okay, so now we will just quickly move to the solution part. Yeah. Yeah. So A is given here. So basically, uh, what will be the matrix B? It is it is being asked that uh, it is given that uh, let B be the matrix whose rows are obtained by normalizing the rows of A. Normalizing means you just need to divide it with. You just need to divide the row by the norm of that row. Okay, that is normalizing. So you'll get uh, okay. So the huh, one by root two zero 
1 by root 2 and here I'm just clear it. Division in this place, uh, two, 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 one, two. okay. Minus two, two by three, three, one by three, two by three. Yeah, two by three. What about this? Okay, four, eight, ten. Okay, one by three root two in this place you'll get. Root two. Then, yeah, two root two by three, right? What about this? Uh, minus one by three root two. This is our matrix P, okay? So in the question, it is given that A, A and B have the same sir, reduced sir, row. Uh, ha, yeah. I have a doubt, sir, here. See, it is uh, 2 and 2 is uh, norm, norm of the first row. You will have yeah. to take it as 2 square plus 0 square plus 2 square. That is uh, 4 plus 4, right? Ha, under root of that thing. Yeah, so it will be uh, root 8. So 2 ah, by root 8, you have, you have uh, simplified it. Ah, root 8 is basically oh, okay. 2 root 2. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, fine. Yeah. So we have got our B as this. Now in the options, so first option is very easy, okay? A and B have the same reduced row Islam form. Okay. So B is basically what? B is uh yeah so we have just multiplied the row one with with some non-zero scalar right and again the row two with some non-zero scalar and again row three with some non-zero scalar so from matrix a we have just multiplied some non-zero scalars with r1 r2 r3 respectively okay so after multiplying it, we have got, we have come up with the matrix B, right? We have got the matrix B. So obviously the reduced row Islan form of both of these will be same. I'm saying about reduced row Islan form, not row Islan form. Row Islan form may be different, but the reduced row Islan form will be same. Even the reduced row Islan form is same for, uh, for, um, for the matrices which are having the same rank and of same order of course okay yeah so option one is pretty much clear i think and uh, yeah so huh. now let's check for option c we'll uh, let us check for option b check for option c b is an orthogonal matrix how to check orthogonal matrix can anyone tell me uh, B dot B transpose should be identity. Yeah, not dot B into B transpose. Right? So matrix multiplication of B into B transpose has to be identity. That means uh, what is our B transpose? So it is 1 by root 2. And uh, minus 2 by 3, 1 by 3 root 2, 0, 1 by 3, 2 root 2 by 3, 1 by root 3, 2 by 3, minus 1 by 3 root 2, right? So B into B transpose will be B into B transpose. That means uh, we'll get uh, 1 by root 2, 0, Okay, so 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2, that is 1. So in this place, you will get uh, 1 by 2 minus, yes, 0. And uh, here you will get, uh, yeah, you will get 0 also. And uh, minus 2 by 3, okay. Minus 2 by 3 root 2, huh, you'll get 0. And here uh, you'll get uh, 
four by nine. Yes. Yeah, you'll get one here. You'll get zero here. One by six plus okay minus one by six yeah zero and here you will get uh, zero yeah here you'll get one okay so we are able to get uh, b into b transpose as identity then you can say this option will be correct this is this one also is correct this option is correct. Now, what about this b into b transpose into x has infinitely many solutions. This is false. What is b into yeah b into b transpose is identity matrix, right? So identity matrix means it has identity matrix means the solution is invertible, right? Invertible, right? Yeah. So by applying the Kramer's rule, yeah. So as our B into B transpose is invertible, by applying the Kramer's rule, you can find the uh, solution of any system of linear equations, right? So if you just apply here, and this is also the homogeneous system of linear equation, you will get the trivial solution here, okay? That is zero. They won't have infinitely many solutions. Okay? Huh. And the columns of B are not orthonormal, but it is orthonormal, right? Because we have just normalized it. Okay. So the B will be orthonormal, columns of B, and rows as well. Okay, so now try to solve this question. So is it clear to everyone? Okay, solve this this one. So see here, it is a very like simple question. Uh, so B 
जेड इज इक्वल टू टू माइनस टू वन इट मीन्स वन बाय रूट टू इट इज अवर पी सो बी इज वन बाय रूट टू जीरो वन बाय रूट टू माइनस टू बाय थ्री वन बाय थ्री टू बाय थ्री ओके So in the question, it is uh, given that uh, we should uh, get the value of z2 and z3 by using the famous rule, right? So okay, what about uh, what about the determinant of b? It will be one by root two into uh, minus one by nine root two. So minus four root two upon nine plus one by root two. Let us combine them. Plus uh, sorry, it will be minus four. By nine minus uh, one by nine root two right. So this is the determinant of B. One by root two into minus two. Okay. So minus two. Minus root two by nine, and uh, here I'll get uh, minus eight root two by nine. Eight minus one by root two into minus nine root two by nine. So root two to get cancelled. Minus one. Determinant of B is minus one. But about uh, determinant of uh, okay, so uh, how to find the uh, solution by using the Cramer's rule? Just need to replace this uh, if you are if you want to find the value of z two. So, ha. Huh, firstly, we saw that b is invertible, right? We can we can uh, like uh, directly apply the Cramer's rule. So, you need to find the determinant of uh, let's say b z two. By replacing uh, the second column with uh, this vector, and so we'll get uh, so one by root two Uh, space is insufficient here.
So we'll get uh, m by root two m two minus four by three plus two root two by three. Right. Let me just verify it. Okay, so actually, I was uh, thinking about some easy method for this. Uh, okay, let me just uh, think about it. Obviously, this in this way you can find, but it will take a lot of time. Okay. So, okay, let me just think about it. So if uh, B into okay, B into B transpose is identity, that means uh, Uh, listen, uh, the way you are solving, actually it will be too much tedious because uh, to get uh, the solutions through camera will, will be tough, uh, will be too much hectic. You can do Yeah, yeah, thing. that is what I am thinking, like, yeah, uh, you can do what is thing, the uh, way. Yeah. Since uh, B uh, is invertible matrix, B is orthogonal matrix, so B is invertible and hence the solution will be unique, right? And uh, in this case, since B is orthogonal matrix, so B transpose is equal to B inverse as the property of orthogonal matrix, yes, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. so for the, the solution you will get through Gamma's rule, uh, the same solution you will get through others, right? So you can uh, yeah, yeah. find like uh, Z1, Z2, Z3 is equal to B inverse, 
into that matrix on the right side, 2 minus 2, 1. And we already know that V inverse is equal to V transpose. So the solution matrix will be V transpose into the matrix 2 minus 2, 1. And just uh, one matrix multiplication, you can get the solution. I hope all of you get it. Yeah, yeah, all of you got it, but Mira has said. No, sir. Okay, okay, no, then uh, just uh, you can, uh, you don't need to like uh, solve this by using Kramer's rule as it is given that, uh, uh, as, as we know that the determinant of uh, this uh, matrix B is invertible. So you can just apply that Gaussian elimination method also. By applying that method, you can solve, uh, huh? And uh, you know that you'll get some unique solution for Z1, Z2, Z3, right? You can just reduce it to rho echelon form or uh, RREF, and you can easily find the value of Z2, Z3. And after finding that, you can just solve what is the value of uh, Z2 plus 2, Z3. That way, you can also do this. So, is it is it clear to all of you? So, like, uh, do you want me to uh, solve this question by applying Gaussian elimination method, or uh, is no, it sir, uh, But uh, just can you explain what uh, Mir sir said? He okay. said uh, uh, some other approach, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, what he has said actually that might uh, it might be a bit uh, like. Uh, it will be a bit confused. It will create some okay. confusion to get okay. into your mind at this okay. time. So, okay. Thank yeah. So you can so just basically easily... RREF. We can uh, solve ah. the matrix B uh, with the help of RREF yeah. and find Z2, Z3, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find okay. Z2, Z3. Okay, sir. That that will just reduce your time, right? Yeah. Okay. So okay. by solving this uh, great like determinant and all those things, you can just apply that. Uh, using uh, you can find the value of Z2, Z3 by using the Gaussian elimination method. Okay. So and you know that Z2, Z3, the value you will get unique. Your unique solution exists, right? So you can just do that thing. So do you all want me to do that thing, like explain that, or is it uh, clear? You can solve it by yourself. The answer will be zero here. Okay. Just because uh, it is already past 4 p.m., so is it clear to all of you? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what about others? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow we'll uh, solve that uh, September uh, the the just the previous term question paper. So let me just uh, stop it. Yeah.